So places like Sweden, Finland, um, France, Belgium, they are doing a 180 when it comes to so-called gender affirming care. And they are saying the number one treatment has to be mental health treatment for these kids. That has to be number one. And uh, Australia, New Zealand, there's also been um, doctors, do groups of doctors have, have published statements and recommendations along the same lines. Medical authorities in Sweden, Finland, uh, Britain, uh, Belgium, France, uh, are, are all saying, no, we can't be doing this because it's not safe. We don't have the data. We are harming our kids. We don't have evidence that these interventions uh, uh, are, are actually going to benefit the kids in the long term. I'm not talking about a year and a half. We need 10 years, 20 years down the line. Because the research that we have about these interventions with individuals who are, have gender dysphoria, the, the studies that we have uh, that go down you know, 20, 30 years, and we don't have many, we, we basically only have one really good study from Sweden, shows us that the mental health problems remain consistently high in this population. And uh, most alarming uh, is that the risk of suicide remains 19 times that in the general population. So we really have to ask questions here. We are sterilizing these individuals. We are uh, uh, giving them uh, medical treatments that uh, cause a long list of uh, problem, medical problems, uh, cardiovascular problems, blood clots, heart attacks, uh, cancers, uh, uh, kidney failure. We're putting girls into menopause. There are girls, young women, in their late teens and early 20s who are having to research how do I deal with hot flashes? How do I deal with insomnia, anxiety, uh, uh, you know, uh, vaginal atrophy? This is the so-called uh, uh, gender-affirming care that all the organizations and our Health and Human Services and President are, uh, are, are foisting on doctors like myself, that that is the only acceptable care that we can provide to these young people. You said that this is, gender dysphoria is a rare condition, but now, as you explained in Tavistock, these numbers have gone through the roof. Based on everything you've told me right now, I'm thinking to myself, you know, the combination of ideology, indoctrination around the issue of identity combined with peer pressure is a result, and th is this the result? Like, is, has there been studies There's, done on this? Well, this is, yeah, there are studies, uh, uh, most notably Lisa Lippman, uh, a physician researcher at Brown University. So she came out with a study in 2018, a very important study. She uh, n noted that at that point there were now uh, these parent groups online of parents of kids who suddenly, without any, you know, any previous indication that they were uncomfortable with their sex, in fact, they might have been the most boyish of boys and the most girly girls, suddenly uh, making an announcement that they are either the opposite sex or they're non-binary, non non-binary meaning that they're, that they're neither male nor female. And these parents, um, you know, we're just blindsided. They just didn't know what the heck is this about. And they would take their kids to gender therapists 
And the gender therapist would say, yeah, yeah, th you know, this is a thing and we're going to affirm your, you don't have a daughter now, you have a son. And when these parents would say, well, well ho 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 you know, hold it, just hold everything. You know, this is my child. I know my child. I know that my child is, for example, I don't know, on the spectrum or was having trouble in school or my child was molested a few years ago. Like, I know my child. And the gender therapist would say, well, if you are not going to accept your daughter as your son, you're the problem. And they would often say this after one or two meetings with the family, and they would say it in front of the child. So these parents uh, would grab their child and run, but they didn't know where to go. So they began to find one another online, and you know they were anonymous online because a lot of them were scared to put their name on on this and admit that they were questioning the process because wherever they turned whether it was their gender therapist or their guidance counselor at school or their pediatrician they were told that their reaction is transphobic and that only their daughter knows who she is and that that uh if they continue to reject their son, son, and they don't go along with their child's new identity, they are going to increase the chance of their child committing suicide. I've talked to a lot of these parents, and uh, I continue talking to them. And this has been, for most of them, the most difficult thing they've ever gone through in their lives. This destroys families, destroys marriages. The child is so indoctrinated that the child is led to believe that if their family, their parents, um, doesn't get on board with this, then their home isn't safe. Their parents are toxic and they really may want to think about leaving. So Lisa Lippman's study in 2018, she surveyed 100, I think 126 parents uh, and asked them a bunch of questions. And she was able to conclude, she, she, you know, th th this was a certain demographic. First of all, uh, unlike the earlier group of kids like that were studied in the Dutch protocol, uh, they were mostly boys. These kids were mostly girls. They were mostly girls. Identified as transgender or non-binary along with or somewhat after a number of their friends did. So they were in friend groups who uh, also had, you know, friends of theirs had also identified uh, as being uh, transgender, and uh, a large number of them had spent enormous amounts of time online. And this is where transgenderism and the COVID lockdowns start to intersect. So uh, the COVID lockdowns with kids not going to school and being online 24-7 either with friends or with uh, or watching YouTube videos and being on other platforms, uh, they were being exposed to these uh, ideas about transgenderism. And there are hundreds of influencers uh, on YouTube and on other platforms that are describing their journeys and their transition from male to female or female to male. And, you know, Oh, you know, I went on estrogen today. I'm so excited. You know, I'm, my breasts are growing or I'm growing facial hair. Like, I can't believe it. This is like the best thing that ever happened to me. So in Lisa Lippman's study, um, the kids were also found to have spent a large amount of time on social media.